program for you. Tag the classroom in your home. Educating program. So we we'll believe you will learn English, mathematics, general studies, full of knowledge. Come, let's have some fun. For the best reasons we know and we believe in awesome pupils like you, that your learning is so important to you. And so this program, Tag the Classroom in Your Home, has been specially packaged for you. A program that has been initiated by Lagos State Universal Basic Education, Education Board, Board Subeb, And it is to ensure that no child is left behind. And this edition is for lower primary classes. Let's introduce ourselves to you, Ntitinu. Hello, amazing pupils. I am Antitino, your mathematics teacher. And today's mathematics class promises to be fun. Right. Hello, pupils. High five. Yeah, we will be having some fun today. And as you know, I am Uncle Sheyi, your general studies teacher. Right, I am Antilola, and I'll be taking you through English studies, which are called communication okay, class. And in trial, we'll bring you the, the classroom, classroom in your home. Please relax and let's learn. so good to be with you again children how are you hope you're keeping safe you're welcome to our english studies class which we call communication class and today we'll be looking at words and antonyms but before we delve into that topic i'm sure you all submitted or most of you submitted your homeworks on traffic light right well you deserve to be celebrated Awesome, but today we'll be looking at another topic, like I said earlier, words and antonyms. But first, let us, let us look at the learning objective. Now, by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to mention the antonyms of some words. Well, if you've been following this um, program for, it, for a while now, you will know that we've talked about antonyms before. But because um, I want us to refresh our memory on it, I am bringing the topic back well with more examples. So antonyms are words that are opposite in meaning. What did I say, children? Antonyms are words that are what? Opposite in meaning. So it is not word and opposite. Well, if you say word and opposite, you're basically saying words and antonyms. So let's begin with those examples I have penned down. Now, this is a word here, keep. Keep. Now we want to look at the opposite of that word. We want to look at the antonym of keep. What is the antonym of keep? It is discard. What did I say, children? Discard. So if you're not keeping something, you're what? You're discarding that particular thing. Okay, another example. After. After. So after. What is the antonym? Of course, after a place before a place or after a thing before a thing so the antonym of after is what is before okay another example easy easy what is the antonym of easy how oh, that work is so easy oh, oh the mathematics is so difficult that english is difficult so the antonym of easy is difficult another example dry dry Dry. What is the antonym of dry? Um, it is a dry mouth, dry land. What is the antonym of dry? It is wet. Wet. Another example, increase. Increase. What is the antonym of increase? If something is not increasing, it is what? Are you telling me? Are you telling me? Decrease. Decrease. So, the antonym of increase is decrease. Another example, active. Active. What is the antonym of active? Okay, the antonym of active is idle. Idle. Okay, if someone is not active, maybe up to something, doing something at a particular point in time, you're just sitting down. Idle. That is um, a word. But mind you, 
A word can have more than one antonym. You can have more than one word which means the opposite of that word, okay? So um, you can just spread your uh, tentacles, spread your knowledge on quite some number of words to get them correctly. Another one is always. Always, what is the antonym of always? Never, never. You always do something, you've never done that thing before. Okay, so the antonym of always is what? Is never. Okay, let us go forward. Another one is dark. Ah, that place is so dark. What is the opposite of dark? What is the antonym of dark? It is what? It is light. So if something is not dark, it will be what? If a place is not dark, it will be light okay 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 all right all right well that is how far um that is how how much i have been able to pen down for you as example but i'm sure you've um you will know this this evaluation questions since it's on the board now i want you to attempt them i will be back STOP stop. Okay, how far gone? Were you able to attempt the four? Yeah, four. The four words. Were you able to find the antonym of the four words? Right? Ah, that's beautiful. Let me clap for you. Beautiful. Beautiful. So let, let's go straight to the answer. So as I'm um the moment I give you the answer on the board, you check your book to confirm if you're correct. If you're correct, you tick. And if not, you can put a star in front and put the answer just right after the star. Okay, so let's start with the first word, early. Early, what is the antonym of early? You're not early to school. You're what? You're late. Late. Okay. The second word, bitter. Bitter. Ah, that food, that, that orange, that orange, okay, is bitter. If it is not bitter, it is what? What is the antonym? To be sweet. What a sweet orange. Mm, that orange is bitter. So antonym of bitter is sweet. Okay, the third one, rich. Rich. I'm rich. What is the antonym? It is what? It is poor. It is poor. Okay. The fourth one, right. Right. What is the antonym of right? So, like I said earlier, you can have more than one um, antonym to a word. This is just a typical example. So, the antonym of right, you can say left, right, left, right? And you can also say wrong. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're so wrong. So, um, that is that on right. Were you able to get the four words correctly? What did you say? Yes. Oh, until all I missed just one. I missed two. Do not worry. Do not worry. You still deserve to be celebrated. Beautiful. Because you've come this far and because you've been participating, you've been listening, you are so awesome. You are awesome. And now to your assignment. I want you to put these words down quickly. And basically what I want you to do is to find the antonyms of these words. You recall what antonyms are, right? They are the opposite of a particular word. So, bend it down and I will be back.
children that settled right settled please submit your work promptly as you will be celebrated when the time comes okay we we'll move to the next segment which is can fix it oh, 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 oh can you fix it what are we fixing today well we are back to our topic money facts who missed this topic oh you miss it oh well it's back and today on money facts we will be looking at table of needs and wants okay we've talked about needs and wants before on this program and we said needs are basically what you that's all pressing what you need urgently, the most important things in life that are meant to be yours. While wants are just things you just want as a form of enjoyment, not really important to you, okay? So, um, I have some words in a, in a table and I want you to fix the items in the appropriate space. What do I mean? Look at this. So these are the words I have on the board here. Look up, children. I have clothes, jackets, medicine, cartoons, video game, cell phone, bed, necklace, baseball, ice cream, and home. So um, this is a table, like I said earlier, and I want you to pick those words, okay? You pick them one after the other and fix them. Is it a need? Is it a want? Is a cloth a need? What did you say, children? jacket and need i want you to look at it properly i'll be back to give you the answer Okay, children, have you been able to study the table? Okay, so let us look at it. Let us look at it. For the first one, we have bed. Bed. Bed is a need. Bed is a what? Bed is a need. Because what? You need a bed to sleep on every night. Every night. Okay, another one. Home. Home. We need a home. We need a place to put our head. We need a place we need to keep our things. Right, children? Yes, so home also is a need and it is very important in every human's life. Another one, clothes. Okay, clothes is also a need because we can't walk naked. What do you think, children? Yes, we can walk naked. And so clothes also is a need, but do not acquire too much before they get to a want. Basic, clo basic clothing are just important. Okay, now we move to the ones. We move to ones. Okay, cartoon is just in the option. And cartoons are ones, children. Yes, I know, but we need to watch PJ Max. We need to watch Disney Junior. It needs to keep us busy. Well, children, it is a one. It is not the basic things in life. Okay. Another one is video game. So if you've been crying to mommy, you've been crying to daddy, I need a video game. Children, please sit and let's think about this. It is a want. It is not a need. It is not a need. So learn to prioritize and think of what is most important. Okay. Another one we have there is cell phone. Cell phone as a five-year-old boy, as a six-year-old girl, as a seven-year-old boy, as an eight-year-old girl, is an option it is not compulsory okay it is not compulsory to have a cell phone now when you grow much more older i'm sure it will become a need then okay but for now it is a what it is a want it is a want another one there is necklace is necklace necklace also is a want oh what is auntie lola saying yes my dear necklace is a one it is not a need it is not so important um to what you will have to 
run over or cry over. Okay, another one. Okay, we are still on the one is baseball. I know you want to play and have fun with your friends, and so you need to play ball. Every boy, every girl wants a ball, a ball, a baseball to play with. But children, it is a want. Yes, you know now, it is a want, it is not a need. Another one is ice cream. Of course, you just want to, you want to enjoy your taste, you want to enjoy your, your give me an English to use for it. You just want to enjoy yourself in a nutshell and ice cream is not a need. It is not a food, okay? It is just a junk. It is not a food, it is a want. And, oh, oh, that is how far we can go. Education also is a need and that is why we've placed so much priority in your education. Well, today come your way next lesson. Do not forget that today is a new day. Learn something new. It is time for mathematics class and it is with Antitido. I love you. You are welcome to today's mathematics class. When I say mathematics time, you say fun time. Mathematics time, fun time, you are correct. And like always, today's mathematics class promises to be fun. I am Antitino and today I will be teaching this distributive rule of multiplication over addition and subtraction. Say that with me. The distributive rule of multiplication over addition and subtraction. And Titinu, I love distributive rule. Yes, you will love today's lesson too. But first of all, let's get correction to the previous homework. Open bracket 8 minus 5, close bracket times 3. Open bracket 6 minus 2 minus 1, close bracket times 2. Now let's see what are you supposed to do. Use the number outside the bracket to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. What are, what, is, what are the numbers in the bracket? 8 and 5. What is the number outside the bracket? 3. So we say 8 times 3 minus 5 times 3. What does 8 times 3 mean? You draw 3 circles or 3 strokes in 8 places. So when you count everything together, or from, your, from the knowledge of your multiplication table, 8 times 3 is 24, and 5 times 3 is 15. 24 take away 15 is 9. 24 take away 15 is 9. I'm sure you got that correctly because you are smart. Good job, you. Yes. Open bracket 6 minus 1. Open bracket 6 minus 2 minus 1. Close bracket times 2. What are we supposed to do? You use the number outside the bracket, that is 2, to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. The numbers in the bracket are 6, 2, and 1. So we have 6 times 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 1 times 2. 6 times 2 means you draw six, 2 strokes in 6 places. Or from the knowledge of your multiplication table, 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 2 is 4. And 1 times 2 is 2. So 12 take away 2, we have 8. eight take, 12 take away 4, we have 8. And 8 take away 2 is 6. 12 take away 4 is 8. 8 take away 2 is 6. Did you get the sums correctly? Good job, you. You are smart. Well done. Now it's brain busters time. It's brain busters time. Let's see what we have in our today's brain busters. Work out this addition and subtraction facts. Write the answer in the bubble. Let's see we have, yes, the frog is having 5 minus 4, 7 plus 3, 8 minus 3, 2 plus 6, 12 minus 1, 4 plus 6, 9 minus 7, 6 plus 6, and 11 minus 5. Attempt this in 40 seconds. And your time starts now.
pens down, pens down. It's 40 seconds and it's time up. Five take away four is one. Seven plus three is ten. Eight minus three is five. Two plus two, two plus six is eight. Twelve take away one is eleven. Four plus six is ten. Nine minus seven is two. And six plus six is twelve. Eleven minus five is six. Let's see. Yes. Did you get all the Brain Buster sums correctly? Stand up and let's roll it up for ourselves. Roll it up, roll it up, roll it up and let it go. You are smart and you are amazing. And Auntie Tinu loves you so much. What is our learning objective for today's lesson? What do I expect you to be able to do at the end of the lesson today? By the end of the lesson, you should be able to expand using the distributive property. Yes. Solve questions correctly using the distributive property. Are you ready? Because I am ready and excited. Yes. Distributive property. Distributive property connects multiplication, addition, and subtraction operations. Yes, the distributive property helps in making difficult problems simpler, like we did in the subtraction questions. Remember, it helped us to be able to expand 6 times 2 minus 1 times 2. We were able to expand and we were able to attempt the question. So it makes difficult problems simpler when you are looking at it in the bracket it looks difficult but immediately you expand it you are able to attempt it you can use the distributive property of multiplication to rewrite expression by distributing or breaking down a fact as a sum or difference of two numbers like we've been doing from our last lesson yes we're able to expand and we wrote it out in if it is having a subtraction sign, we are writing it out in difference. And if it is having an addition, addition sign, we are have write it, writing it out in sum of the two numbers. Yes. Now let's solve problems using the distributive law. What do you need to be able to solve problems today? Scream it out. Good job, you. You're 100% attention and focus let's go yes we have two times open bracket three plus two minus three close bracket anti yes don't shout today we are having both addition and subtraction in our, in our questions so so easy the same methods which we have been using for addition and the same method which we use for our subtraction is what we'll use to tackle addition and subtraction so what are we going to do you use the number outside the bracket to multiply all the numbers in the bracket then you must take note of where your addition sign is and where your subtraction sign is let's see Use the number outside the bracket to multiply each of the numbers in the bracket. I've said that. What, are, what is the number outside the bracket? 2. And what are the numbers in the bracket? 3, 2, and 3. You need to take note of where your addition sign is and where your subtraction sign is. So we have 2 times 3 plus the addition sign is between 3 and 2. So write it down there plus open bracket 2 times 2 close bracket and your subtraction sign is between 2 and 3 i've written mine down so we have 3 times 2, two times 3 2 times 3 means two balls in three places and i've written it out 1 2 1 1 2 2 1 2 3 and 2 times 2 means two balls in two places 1 2 1 1 2 2 2 times 3 means 3 balls in 2 places. One, 2 balls in 3 places. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Now, 2 times 3, 
from the knowledge of your multiplication table or from what I've, I've from the balls I've written on the board. Two times three. Let's count it together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so six. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Yes, now we have six plus four minus six. Six plus four. Let's count six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's count four. One, two, three, four. Let's count it together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So six plus four is ten. Now ten minus six. Let's count ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's take away six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What are we left with? One, two, three, four. So ten take away six is four. And four is our final answer. So when you expand two times three, open bracket, three plus two minus three, close bracket, you get four. Are we together? Say, together we are. Good job, you. Three times, open bracket, four plus two minus three, close bracket. What do we do? You use the number three to multiply all the numbers in the bracket, four, two, and three. Then take note of where your addition sign is and where your subtraction sign is, yes. So we have three times four plus two times three minus three times three. Yes, don't forget to take note of the signs. Make sure you know where your addition is in the bracket and where your subtraction sign is. That is the only thing that can make you get a wrong answer if you don't place the signs properly. Yes, so three times four means three apples in four places. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So three times four is twelve. 2 times 3 means 3 in 2 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes, and 3 times 3 means 3 in 3 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yes, so 3 times 4 is 12, you should know it from your multiplication table, and I've also used apples to represent what I'm trying to say, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 3 is Nine. So what do we do? We have 12 plus 6 minus 9. 12 plus 6 minus 9. Let's count 12. You first of all solve 12 plus 6 before you solve your subtraction. When you count 12 and you count 6 and add them together, you have 18. You see that I wrote my 18 minus 9 down. Then I'll count 18 and take away 9 to get Nine. When you try to do everything at the same time, you might make a mistake. So you first of all tackle the first two sum. 12 plus 6, you get 18. When you get 18, you subtract 9 from 18 to get 9. Yes. Two times, open bracket, 6 minus 4 plus 3, close bracket. And Titino, I can notice that the sign is changing place. Yes, the signs can be anywhere. That is why I'm telling you to make sure you take note of where your signs are. Yes, so now in this question, we have the subtraction sign coming before the addition. So what do you do? You use the number outside the bracket to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. So we have 2 times 6 minus 2 times 4 plus 2 times 3. 2 times 6 means you should draw your object 2 in 6 places. 2 in 6 places. And now I'm having 2 apples in 6 places. 2 times 4 means 2 apples in 4 places. And 2 times 3 means 2 apples in 3 places. So let's count what 2 times 6 will give us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 times 4 is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So 2 times, four, two times 6 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. And 2 times 3 is 6. Yes. So we have 12 minus 8 plus 6. 
12 minus 8 plus 6. When you count 12 and take away 8, you are left with 4. And 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. When you count 8 and take when you count 12 and take away 8, you are left with 4. And when you add 4 and 6 together, you get 10. Are you following? I'm sure you are. Good job, you. 3 plus 5 minus 2, close bracket, times 4. 3 plus 5 minus 2, close bracket, times 4. What do we do? You use the number outside the bracket to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. What are the numbers in the bracket? 3, 5, and 2. What is the number outside the bracket? 4. So we say 3 times 4 plus 5 times 4 minus 2 times 4. 3 times 4 from your times table is 12. 5 times 4 is 20 and 2 times 4 is 8. Then start with the first two sums. 12 plus 20 is 32. 32 minus 8 is 24 and 24 is our final answer. Yes. 7 plus 2 minus 5, close bracket, times 2. What do you do? The same thing we've been doing. Use the number outside the bracket, that is 2, to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. What are the numbers in the bracket? 7, 2, and 5. So you say 7 times 2. 7 times 2 from your timetable is 14. 2 times 2 is 4. And 5 times 2 is 10. Yes. 14 plus 4 minus 10. 14 plus 4 minus 10. 14 plus 4, start with these two first. 14 plus 4 is 18. 18 minus, 4, 18 minus 10 is 8. 14 plus 4 is 18. 18 minus 10 is 8. Are we together? Are we together? Say together we are. Yes. 6 plus 3 minus 4, close bracket, times 3. What do you do? You use 3 to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. Yes, so we have 6 times 3 plus 3 times 3 minus 4 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. You solve these two first. 18 plus 9 is 27. 27 minus 12 is 15, and 15 is your final answer. Yes, and now it's time to do this. How well have you been focusing and listening attentively? Show me by scoring everything in today's evaluation question. Open bracket 7 minus 5 plus 3, close bracket times 2. 3 times 5 plus 2 minus 6, close bracket. Attempt this in 1 minute 30 seconds and your time starts now.
pens down pens down it's time up no more writing let's get correction to our evaluation question seven minus five plus three like I've always been asking, what are you supposed to do? You use the number outside the bracket, that is 2, to multiply all the numbers in the bracket, taking note of where your signs are. Yes, yeah, so we have 7 times 2 minus 5 times 2 plus 3 times 2. 7 times 2 is 14 minus 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 times 2 is 6. 14 minus 10 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. And Titinu, I got it. Yippee. Good job, you. Yes. 3 times open bracket 5 plus 2 minus 6. Close bracket. What do we do? The same thing we've been doing from the beginning of the lesson. Use the number 3 to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. What are the numbers in the bracket? 5, 2, and 6. Taking note of where your signs are. 3 times 5 plus 3 times 2 minus 3 times 6. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 3 times 6 is 18. 5 plus 6. Remember, you do this one first. 5 plus 6 is 21. 21 minus 18 is 3. And Titi, no, I'm dancing. I got the two sums correctly. Good job, you. Now let me give you three clap cheer. Good job, you. You are awesome. Good job, you. Assignment time. Yes, it's assignment time. Don't forget to do Auntie Tino's homework. Let's see what we have in our assignment today. Open bracket 8 minus 5 plus 2, close bracket times 3. Open bracket 6 minus 4 plus 2, close bracket times 2. Capture this in 20 seconds and your time starts now. Okay, 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 it's 20 seconds and it's time up. Yes. And that is it for today. We have come to the end of another educative and exciting mathematics class. I hope you had fun. Yes, I had fun too. I told you. Yes, but don't go away because Uncle Sheyi is here for another amazing time in general studies class. Till I come your way next lesson, remember, I love you so much. And from me, it's bye-bye. Hello, wonderful pupils. How are you today? High five. Okay, you're welcome to your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. And I'm your teacher, your general studies teacher, Uncle Sheyi. And today, we will be looking at prevention of road accidents. Remember, we have learned about road accidents. So today we will be looking at how to prevent road accidents from happening, okay? But before we go into today's class, let's have correction to the previous homework that you were given. In our last class, you were asked to mention four causes of road accidents. Four causes of road accidents. Bad weather, yes, bad roads, Reckless driving, yes, some people drive wide and they will be pressing their phones, yes, congestion, poor road lights, yes, impatient pedestrians, and so on. I know you are correct and you deserve a chair. Well done, my friend. So today we will be looking at prevention of road accidents and by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain ways of preventing road accidents. Okay? All right. I want you to track me as we move on. Remember, in our last class, I told you that road accidents are unexpected dangerous occurrence on the road, which could lead to loss of lives and properties. Okay? Yes, road accidents could lead to loss of lives and properties. 
as you can see on the screen, you can see these two vehicles that have collided and they are destroyed. Okay? And possibly the people in these vehicles could have lost their lives. Okay? Remember also that we said um, road accident could be as a result of carelessness of drivers. You have drivers that are passing one through one way, they drive through one way. You have drivers that will not look at the road signs. You have drivers that will be receiving calls while they are driving. So this is as a road accident is as a result of carelessness of drivers and also some impatient passengers or pedestrians. Okay, all right. As you can see, the driver is using his phone while driving, and even the passerby was not watching well. He was not looking at the right and left before crossing the road, which could lead to accident. Okay, now that I have refreshed your memory on what we did last time, we are now going to look at how to prevent road accidents. How can we prevent road accidents? How can we prevent road accidents from happening? One, drive carefully. Pupils, say that after me, drive carefully. I know you are not driving yet, but by the time you get to 18 years of age and beyond that, I know you will start driving. And when you start driving, drive carefully. Don't use your phone while driving. Don't, don't be gisting while driving. Always focus on where you are going, okay? Drive carefully. Don't move too fast, okay? Well done, my pupils. Also, another way we can prevent road accidents is by repairing roads that are damaged. And this is to the government, where there are potholes. The, the potholes should be what? Should be repaired. So all roads that are bad should be repaired so that we will not have accidents on our road, okay? Another way we can prevent accidents is by checking and repairing vehicles regularly. Okay, as a driver or as drivers, you should always service your vehicles, your cars, you should always service them and always check before taking the vehicle out every day. You always check if anything is wrong with the vehicle. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the next one. Use the pedestrian bridge. Pupils, you should do what? Use the pedestrian bridge. Even when you are going on the road with your mom, and she wants to take you to cross over to the other side and there is a pedestrian bridge tell her mom dad let us use the pedestrian bridge okay so don't cross the express road always make use of the pedestrian bridge so that you will not what be involved in an accident okay all right also Road signs and traffic signs should be mounted in necessary places. Yes, some drivers, because they could not see, because the road signs are not visible enough, sometimes they go into the wrong roads and as a result, there is accident. So road signs and traffic signs should be in the necessary places where they can see them visibly to avoid accidents. Okay? All right. And when they see these road signs and traffic signs, they should obey. We have some drivers that they willingly disobey traffic and road signs and thereby leading to accidents. So if we want to prevent accidents from happening, we should always obey the what? The road and traffic signs. The green light says you can go. The red light says you should stop. And when you see the red light, you should do what? You should stop. All right? Okay. Wow, I hope you understood all what I have been saying. I'm sure you did. So now you can pick your pen and open your books. Let us have our evaluation. You can number your work, okay? Number your work from one to five. And please do not write the questions. Do not write the questions. I will read out the questions for you. All you just need to do is to put down the correct answer okay have you numbered your work all right let's start number one drivers do not need to check their vehicles every day 
before driving out. True or false? Drivers do not need to check their vehicles every day before driving out. Should they check their vehicles? Okay, you've done that. Let's move on to the next one. We should not press our phones and chat while driving. True or false? We should not press our phones and chat while driving. True or false? Okay, number three. Traffic light should not be hidden. Traffic light should not be hidden in the corners of the road. True or false? Traffic light should not be hidden in the corners of the road. True or false? Oh, you've done that. Okay, let me move to the next one. Number four. The seat belt is always discomforting. You don't have to use it every time. Is that true? The seat belt is always discomforting. You don't have to use it every time. True or false? Number five. When the expressway is less busy, you can cross over without using the pedestrian bridge. True or false? When the expressway is less busy, you can cross over without using the pedestrian bridge. True or false? Okay, let me give you some few seconds to cross-check your work, to dot your I's and cross your T's, to check your spellings if they are correctly written. So do that quickly before I give the correction. Okay? Okay, have you done that? All right. Now you can drop your pen and listen as I read out the correct answers. Drivers do not need to check their vehicles every day before driving out. False. Drivers should always check their vehicles before taking them out every day. Question number two. We should not press our phones and chat while driving. True. We should not press our phones. We should not receive calls. We should not chat while driving if we don't want to be involved in accident. Number three, traffic light should not be hidden in the corners of the road. Traffic light should not be hidden in the corners of the road. True, traffic light should be in a place where it is visible for everyone so that drivers would not have excuse that it is because they couldn't see the traffic light or the, the sign. That is why they are disobeying the traffic signs. Okay? All right, number four, the seat belt is always discomforting. You don't have to use it every time. That is false. The seat belt is not discomforting, is it? It is not. So you have to use it every time. All right? Question number five, which is the last question. When the expressway is less busy, you can cross over without using the pedestrian bridge. No, false. You should not do that. Whether the expressway is busy or less busy, always use the what? The pedestrian bridge. Always use the what? The pedestrian bridge. Okay. All right. Did you get five out of five? Four out of five? Three out of five? You deserve a pounding chair. Let me give you. Hmm. 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 Well done, my friend. And if you didn't really do well in this evaluation, don't worry. You should not be depressed because I'm sure in our next class, you will do better. And for you to do better, you need to tune into the program in time and you need to listen attentively to the teacher. Okay? All right. You can pick your pen now and write down this assignment. Mention four ways of preventing road accidents. Mention four ways of preventing road accidents. Mention four ways of preventing road accidents. Okay? All right, to our favorite segment of the program. Did you know? 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 No. Okay. I'm in order to know what is our question for today. Okay. Do you know the longest bridge in West Africa? Hmm. The longest bridge in West Africa. Do you know it? 
Oh, you know it. All right, put it down. Put it down. Let's see if you will be correct. Put it down. The longest bridge in West Africa. All right, have you done that? Okay, what is the answer? Oh, the third mainland bridge in Lagos. Wow, it's in Nigeria. Okay, the third mainland bridge in Lagos is the longest bridge in West Africa. Okay? So the longest bridge in West Africa is the third mainland bridge in Lagos. Okay, this is it. Of course, you must have passed through the long um, the third mainland bridge before. Yes, it links the island to the mainland. Yes, yes. So it is the longest bridge in West Africa. I wonder what will be the longest bridge in the whole of Africa. You can do research on that. Okay? All right. And that is it for today. I hope you had a great time with me. I enjoyed the class. Well done, pupils. Until next time that I will see you again, Uncle Shei says, be good. Bye. Amazing. Yeah. You would agree with me that today's lesson was interesting. It was educative and at the same time fun filled. Uncle Shay, you what's your take on this? Yes, Auntie Tinu, I totally agree with you. Today's class was awesome. I say good job you to the pupils. As a matter of fact, you should be giving kudos for your rapt attention and for always submitting your assignment and comment in good time. We say good, good job, job you. Auntie Lola. Yes, there is a YouTube channel you can visit Paraventure you miss any of the lesson. Lagos Suburb YouTube channel, okay? I repeat, Lagos Suburb YouTube channel. You have a phone, you have access to your parent phone, please visit that channel. Don't forget to send in your comments, questions and homework to the number showing on the screen. The number is 0815086563. SMS and WhatsApp messages only. Mm. Do not call. Do you love your family and friends? If you love your family and friends, you must stay safe for them and for you especially. To stay safe for everyone you love. Wash your hands regularly. And practice social distancing. If you must go out, wear your face, face mask. mask. Till we come your way next lesson, remember at last to bed, we, we leave, leave no child, child behind. behind.